Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Johnny Chivers. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at AWS SQS, that simple queue service. It's gonna be a beginner's guide video to go alongside all those other beginner's guide videos that I've done so far on the channel. Link in the description above to the playlist, or as usual, you can find all this information for free on my website, www.johnnychivers.co.uk. We also have a discourse forum on my website where we can discuss all things AWS as well. That being said, today's video will come in two parts. First, we'll cover a little bit of theory just so we know and understand the service better. Then, after we've covered the theory, we'll jump onto the console and we'll actually build an SKS queue and the Lambda function to act as a consumer of that queue as a little added extra. Again, there's beginner's guides already on this channel, the Lambda, so check that out if you're not sure what the Lambda function is. With that being said, let's get started. So firstly, as usual, what is SQS? So SQS stands for Simple Queue Service. It's a queuing service from AWS. A queuing service is quite a complex thing um, in terms of computing, but essentially if you think of it like a supermarket queue, where you enter a queue, you shuffle along and you exit the queue. Queuing isn't always as simple as that in cloud computing or general computing. When we enter the queue, we can get jumbled around, so the first person into the queue might not be the first person out of the queue, but we do have mechanisms where we can ensure that. SQS is actually AWS's version of a queuing system. It's a managed service, so we don't have to look after the infrastructure. AWS looks after that for us. It comes in two flavors. One is the standard queue, where we enter a queue and we exit that queue, or a message enters the queue and exits that queue. AWS does its best to hold the order, but it's not guaranteed. So if I'm the first person into the queue, there's no guarantee I'll be the first person served when I get out of that queue, i.e. if I'm the first message into the queue, there's no guarantee I'll be the first message out of the queue. It also guarantees at least once delivery on standard queue. That means when a message enters the queue, it may actually get delivered twice on the other side as it's coming out. AWS does do its best to mitigate this, but there's no guarantee. However, with that in mind, there's also a FIFO queue, which is first in, first out. This is a little bit more expensive, but it does guarantee that order. So if I'm the first message into that queue, I will also be the first message out of that queue. It also guarantees only once delivery. So AWS makes sure that we don't actually get delivered or that message doesn't get delivered twice. Queues themselves at a conceptual level aren't particularly complex. We have producers and these place things into the queue. We have the queue itself, which AWS is handling for us, and we have consumers. And these are compute at the other end that actually consumes from that queue. Couple of important things about a queue system and in terms of its actual consumers. Once the data is on the queue, been pushed by a producer and the messages are sitting there, a consumer is triggered to look at that message. Only one consumer can look at a message at a time and only one consumer will process that message. That means we'll have lots of different messages being processed by lots of different consumers and that means that we're highly distributed. And you may be thinking, well, what's the point in that? Why don't I just have one consumer processing one message? The idea behind the queue is that we're decoupling, that is breaking up our architecture. We also want our architecture to be fault tolerant and we also want it to scale. With that in mind, if we go back and look at the diagram with the consumer, if we've one consumer and that consumer fails, then we have nothing else consuming off the topic and our application is broken. If we end up with lots and lots of messages, it may be a case that that consumer can't pull them off quick enough. However, a queue is good in this instance because it stops the consumer becoming throttled. It means it's only taking one message off at a time and it may take a long time to get through those messages. But if we didn't have the queue in the middle, the application would actually fail because the actual consumer, if we were directly sending everything to it, would just be throttled and can't handle any more. Then we also have fault tolerance built in with multiple consumers. There's a concept of visibility on a queue. And when a message is read off a queue, we give it a visibility time. After that time has expired and our consumer has not said back to the queue, I have processed that message, that message reappears on the queue. So another consumer can pull that message and work with it. 
The idea is that if our consumer goes down at some point after it's pulled the message, we don't lose the message itself. It goes back into the queue to be reprocessed. And this is really important if you're using things like spot instances in AWS that aren't always guaranteed to go up. So we could lose that spot instance during processing and need to pull that message again onto another consumer. But why use AWS SQS? Queues can be, and not always, notoriously difficult to implement at scale. And the idea of SQS is really just to simplify that process. We push on the infrastructure to AWS and it just simplifies that DevOps process, especially if you're kind of new to cloud computing or you're new to queuing in general and computing and you just want a queue that works. We've lowered that barrier to entry and then we can just get on with developing and building our architecture. But when do we use AWS SQS? So we use it when we want a queue and a queue can be used in many different types of ways when we're building applications. A really good example is when you want a distributed architecture that's fault tolerant. So let's say I ran a website and that website had a profile picture that we wanted to turn into a thumbnail. Well, rather than every time a user uploads a profile picture and then another piece of code kicks off in the background and it pulls down that picture and then we're having this part of compute that's always on just to process pictures, we could make use of a queue and spot instances. When I, as a user, upload my picture onto my website as my profile picture, that could be a message that enters the queue and says, hey, this user, Johnny Shivers, has just changed his profile picture and it's located here on the server. This is then consumed by an AWS spot instance on the other side that says, I'm going to resize that profile picture to make it a thumbnail, takes the message, sees the URL of where it's sitting on the server, goes out to the server, grabs the big picture back, processes that down to a smaller picture and stores that for future use. It's also now fault tolerant. So if we lose the spot instance during the processing of that profile picture and it hasn't replied back to the queue to say I'm done, then the message will reappear after the time period that we say, and it could be picked up by another spot instance. And that's just one example. Other examples could be when you want to have a message sent on a chat instance and you don't want it to be lost. You can write down a chat message, hits the queue, it's picked up on the other side by a worker and then sent out to the other person's chat, which means you don't lose the message in between. And it also means that the chat server will never be throttled. It's just passing messages all the time around. So with that being said, that's the kind of theory or a very light theory of SQS and basic queuing and computing. So join me on the console where we're gonna spin up our first SQS queue. We're gonna send a few messages. We're gonna pull for those messages down and then we're actually gonna use a Lambda as a consumer as well. See you on the console. Okay guys, that's me logged into the console as you can see. We want to navigate to SQS, so type in SQS at the top and navigate to Simple Queue Service. Once on the console, we want to click Create Queue here, or alternatively, you can go left hand side and Queues, then Create Queue. Give your queue a name. I'm going to call this one Test so I remember to delete it, but give it a name that you want to remember. One thing to note here is that I'm going for standard. Um, it's at least once delivery and it's best effort ordering versus first in, first out, exactly processed once, which is a FIFO queue. They're more expensive, um, but they are necessary when you need ordering. Other important configuration settings for the purpose of this lesson is that messages are retained for four days. They can be up to 14. I've set it to the maximum message size of 256 kilobits. If you need to use a message larger than this, AWS recommend that you send it the S3 and then put the S3 link as the actual message on this queue. Everything else I'm just going to leave as default. There's no need to worry about it. And I want to create the queue. And as quick as that, we can see that actually the queue has been created. So to test that the queue is working, you click send and receive messages up here. We're going to call this one test message one. We'll put a slight delay so it doesn't hit the queue straight away of two seconds and you want to send messages. We want to send another message then. Um, we can send send message two and you want to send message. Once we're polling, you want to click pull for messages. This means that we're going to start in behind the scenes as you can see and we're looking for those messages. If I click on it, that one's test message two and that one's test message one. So for example, I am now polling the entire time 
I am going to click test message three and see if I can beat the load bar for the poll. Send message. Should take a few seconds. And you can see the test message three has now arrived. So that's our producer on the top here and our subscriber on the bottom here. Now, let's take this another step further and use a Lambda function to actually be our consumer. So on the top, let's go to Lambda, open in new tab. We wanna go create a function. We're gonna cheat and use a blueprint. We wanna go SQS and we wanna type in SQS polar, i.e. something that pulls the queue. We click on it, we give it a name, so I'm just gonna call it test. We wanna create a new rule. New rule name, I'm just gonna call this test rule delete, so I remember to delete it. SQS permissions. We need the test queue that we've just configured. Batch size is 10, enable trigger, leave everything else as default, and click create. As you can see, our little trigger here is just logging um, the output of the message. So back on the queue service, and let's type in a couple of more messages. So let's do four. Let's do five. Let's do six. And let's do seven. That's them. make sure that they've actually appeared by clicking pull messages. So that's our producer. And we're back down here to our consumer. And as you can see, we've received all seven messages. Back onto the Lambda, back onto then configuration. You wanna click on the trigger. So general configurations trigger. You can see that my queue is currently disabled here. So, or the, the trigger for the queue is currently disabled. So let's enable that. You're now enabling the following trigger. Fantastic. Back on the SQS. So we sent those seven messages. Let's just send two more and make sure it's still working. So there's eight, nine, and what the heck, let's just do three, 10. Let's check those messages are being pulled for correctly. What's this? The messages aren't appearing. So why are the messages no longer appearing? Well, that's simple. SQS, they're actually being pulled off by the Lambda function now. So our workers are Lambda. Our Lambda is coming in, pulling the queue, finding the message, processing the message out for us, meaning that there's nothing left to process now. So let's just check the Lambda logs to make sure that it got those three messages. If you go into monitor, and you go into view logs in CloudWatch and click on it. And after a few seconds, you can see that we've actually got the messages. Test message four, five, eight, nine, ten. And it should have from one to seven. Yeah, so you can see that there's no order actually that it's processing these, it's just grabbing them. So that's a very basic introduction to AWS SQS and then using the Lambda to actually process those messages. And now we have a serverless distributed architecture where we don't have anything tightly coupled together. And this is the foundations of building microservices. So with that being said, I've been Johnny Chevers. I'll make all this information for free on my website, www.johnnychevers.co.uk. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching. I might.